So our today's topic of discussion is to understand the pathogenesis of obesity and its clinical consequences. Right? It's a very important topic. So our learning, this is our learning objective, right? We want to understand the pathogenesis and its clinical consequences, right? We, we will discuss the complications of obesity as well. All right. So first of all, definition. What do you mean by obesity? So the obesity means accumulation of adipose tissue that is of sufficient magnitude to impair the health. Now basically the bo body mass index is a most commonly used parameter to define the obesity. Right? The body mass index means the weight in the kilogram divided by height in meter square. If this particular BMI right if this particular bmi more than 24.9 more than 25 then the individual is overweight so the normal range is 18.5 to 24.9 between 25 to 30 it's a overweight more than 30 kilogram per meter square the patient is called as an obese and if bmi is between 30 to 35 it is a obesity class 1 between 35 to 40 it is called as an obesity class 2 and over 40 it's it's an extreme degree of class 3 obesity so based on that bmi obesity can be defined all right see friends the obesity is associated with the following diseases right like that of hypertension it can be associated with type 2 diabetes mellitus right insulin resistance then dyslipidemia then it is associated with uh, cancers as well Obesity is uh, associated with cardiovascular diseases, especially myocardial infarction and brain stroke, right? So obesity is a very dangerous condition, all right. See, the ob obesity is a very major public health problem in the developed as well as developing countries. According to World Health Organization, there is a greater than 1.9 billion adults are overweight or obese in the 2015 and among which 650 million are obese. So that's a uh, shocking uh, figures. And now we will see the pathogenesis in the detail. See the pathogenesis of obesity is a very complex and incompletely understood, right? Genetic, environmental and psychological factors play a role in the development of obesity, right? So let's understand it in somewhat detail. So simply obesity is a disorder of energy homeostasis in the terms of food intake and energy expenditure. Whenever this balance is disturbed, obesity will occur. And the hypothalamus is a master regulator of energy homeostasis. Right? This is the hypothalamus. All right. See, the hypothalamus receive a input from periphery about the state of energy store. Right? So accordingly, an uh, anabolic or catabolic circuit will get activated, right? So based on energy store, these circuits are activated. The catabolic circuit means there will be reduction of food intake and there will be increase in the energy expenditure. While the anabolic circuit activation means increased food consumption and the reduction of energy expenditure. So based on body's energy requirement, these circuits are activated. The energy balance regulati regulating neurohumoral mechanism can be subdivided into three components, right? The first one is peripheral or afferent system, which will send a signal to the second central processing unit, which we will see in the diagram, right? And the third important component is efferent system. All right. So basically, there are three components of energy balance regulating mechanism. All right. So the central processing system, hypothalamus, right? It is a central processing system, hypothalamus, and arcuate nucleus is very play a very important role where the neurohumoral peripheral efferent signal will be integrated to generate a efferent signal, right? So the signals will be carried out to hypothalamus from which it is, it will be sent efferent system. All right. right. See, in the catabolic pathway, there is a brake pedal in which POMC CART neurons are involved. While in the anabolic state, the NPY AGRP neurons are involved. 
which is known as a gas pedal for appetite stimulation right it is a gas pedal while catabolic pump ccrt was uh, brake right it was like that of car brake all right see uh, the peripheral appetite suppressing signals uh, are leptins right which are the molecules that will carried out appetite suppressing suppressing signal right it will suppress the appetite so the leptin adiponectin resistin then uh, pyy uh, they all are involved in appetite suppressing signal amylin and obestatin they are involved in catabolic activation and insulin right they will carry a catabolic signal while the peripheral appetite stimulating signals will be carried out by two particular molecules right they will carry out anabolic activation that is ghrelin and retinol binding protein 4 they will carry so friends uh, this particular diagram demonstrating a energy balance regulatory circuit right which is a basis for the pathogenesis of obesity so this particular diagram will be helpful to understand the pathogenesis of obesity i have taken this image from pathological basis of disease robins book right this is a very important overview diagram so friends uh, basically the energy homeostasis or the energy balance regulatory circuit consisting of three particular signaling system we have already discussed that system the one is afferent system second one is uh, central processing system and the third one is efferent system so the afferent system will send a signal to the hypothalamus right which is a central processing unit from which the efferent signal will be carried out to the peripheral tissue all right so whenever the body is in fed state right whenever individual is well fed when the stomach is full and when there is a sufficient energy stored in the adipose tissue at that time whenever your stomach is full you don't need a food right at that time uh, we don't need a food in the well fed state so in that condition the afferent system from the leptin insulin pyy and sometime from the ghrelin will be carried out to the hypothalamus and they will activate a catabolic circuit right and because of catabolic circuit activation in the well fed state the food intake will be reduced and the energy expenditure will occur so in that way energy balance is regulated and exactly opposite whenever the body energy store is low or the body is in fasting stage right whenever body is in fasting stage and you need a food at that place so in that particular condition the ghrelin will send a signal to the hypothalamus for the activation of anabolic circuit and because of anabolic circuit activation there will be more food intake and less energy expenditure so by regulating the catabolic and anabolic circuit the energy balance will be maintained right and so the body weight is maintained and the patient will not obese whenever it is disturbed the obesity can occur all right now the leptin is being secreted from the fat that is adipose tissue right the ghrelin will be produced from parietal cell of stomach insulin will be secreted from beta cell of pancreas and the pyy will be secreted from the l cell of intestine all right and now this particular diagram is also taken from the robins book right it's a very important diagram now see uh this particular diagram will demonstrate the catabolic and anabolic pathway in the detail so basically there are afferent signal central processing system in the hypothalamus and the efferent signal right so this particular diagram showing a neurohumoral circuit in the hypothalamus that will regulate the energy balance i will show you how whenever your body is in fed stage right whenever you are well fed whenever your stomach is full at that time there will be afferent signal activation and it will send a signal to the hypothalamus 
to the hypothalamus in the arcuate nucleus right and they will send a signal to the first order neuron this is the first order neuron that is pom c and the cart here the pom c stain from stand for pro opium melanocortin and the cart means cocaine and amphetamine regulate regulated transcript so this first order neuron will get activated right so it will generate a catabolic pathway by the production of alpha msh and production of trh thyroid releasing hormone crh and the bdnf right bdnf means uh, brain derived neurotropic factor and the crh means corticotropin releasing hormone all right so in that way catabolic system is being activated right here the alpha the production of alpha msh will stimulate a second order neuron as well which is mc3 and mc4 right so again i am summarizing whenever the body is in a well fed stage whenever your stomach is full at that time you don't need an extra food so in that condition first of all the afferent signal will send a signal to the hypothalamus particularly in the first order neuron the first order neurons are pom c and cart so they will activate the catabolic pathway by the production of alpha msh right and this alpha msh will stimulate a second order neuron will send a signal to the second order neuron and the mc melanocortin 3 and 4 receptors are the second order neurons and they will ultimately produce a trh crh and the bdnf and finally they will activate the catabolic system so that there will be more energy consumption and less food intake that is a catabolic pathway exactly opposite whenever the body is in fasting stage right whenever there is a starvation a body need a food at that time anabolic signal will be activated by the activation of npy and agrp here in the fasting stage the afferent signal will be carried out to the first order neuron npy and agrp and they will produce is a npy which will again stimulate a second order neuron that is y1 and y5 so here the first order neurons are the npy and agrp and the second order neurons are y1 and y5 right so because of that anabolic system is being activated and there will be more food intake and less energy consumption so we can say that the whole process of catabolic and anabolic signaling pathway will be regulated by first order and second order neurons and it will be carried out in the arcuate nucleus of hypothalamus so we can say that hypothalamus is a master regulator of energy balance right for the maintaining the energy homeostasis hypothalamus is a master regulator so this is the basic pathogenetic Uh, mechanism for the energy balance right whenever this energy balance or neuro humoral circuits is disturbed the obesity can occur after few months or few year all right and now we will see the pathological consequences that is the complication of obesity which are the complication so as we have discussed obesity is a major public health problem right it can uh, it can have many adverse effect on the health and it will increases overall morbidity and the mortality of an individual so let's see the complication in the detail or the consequences of obesity in the detail so the first complication is type 2 diabetes mellitus right it's a very uh, silent uh, dangerous complication it's a silent killer right and because of that uh, the patient will develop insulin resistance right and because of insulin resistance there will be failure of peripheral tissue to use the insulin right glucose uptake will not carried out by peripheral tissue as there is a insulin resistance the third complication is dyslipidemia means you will have increase in the amount of bad cholesterol that is ldl vldl and the triglyceride while the good cholesterol will be decrease particularly hdl 
it will be decrease and because of that because of dyslipidemia a individual can have a more chance for development of cardiovascular diseases particularly infarction brain stroke etc the fourth complication is polycystic ovarian syndrome and the menstrual irregularity in the woman right now in the main there can be development of gynecomastia because of high estrogen all right the sixth complication is osteoarthritis patient will complain a knee pain because of heavy weight right there will be osteoarthritis the seventh complication is venous stasis or varicose vein right the eighth complication is acanthosis nigricans in which a individual will develop a darkening of skin and there will be thickening of the skin folds particularly on the neck elbow and interpharyngeal space the ninth complication is increase skin friability the tenth complication is urinary incontinence right the eleventh complication is sleep apnea then polycythemia and right sided heart failure which is known by the name core pulmonale the 12th complication is patient can suffer from acid reflux gastroesophageal reflux disease the 13th complication is gold stone formation right and obese individual will almost develop fatty liver in all the condition right almost all develop fatty liver all right the 15th complication which is very danger is few study demonstrate that there is a more chance of cancer formation in the obese individual particularly of prostate colon esophagus rectum pancreas breast endometrium tissue thyroid gallbladder cancer formation